how are you and your family doing uh, health wise? How are you and your family doing when it comes to, uh, to fighting this pandemic? Yeah, I'll jump in there. No, I think uh, most of the routine has been established now. So we, we kind of got a good grasp of what's going on. And, you know, now that you get some concrete things, uh, i.e. like school being canceled for the kids, at least there's direction. You kind of know what, what you're dealing with. Uh, but other than that, I think what keeps you going is that we're all in this together. And it's not a thing that's singling out our family or anybody else. It's uh, collectively doing our own part. So we're maintaining fine. We won't bore everybody with the details. I'm getting a little bit better at painting. Uh, the floor house has never been cleaner. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to do some baseboard painting or something next. So I'm running out of projects, but uh, we're, we're maintaining. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I'll, I'll piggyback on what Coach O said. Uh, you know, finding uh, new things I'd be coming better at. Uh, lawn maintenance has taken more of a priority than previous years with the nice weather coming along. And, uh, you know, from a work standpoint, just learning to, to work uh, with our staff uh, in a different way, which I think will help in the future, uh, be it in personnel, uh, especially with us being on the road so much. I think in the past we've maybe uh, – put things on pause where now we've used formats like we're using today in Zoom that we can easily uh, get together all collectively instead of individually. So it's helped us uh, expand our base work-wise, but uh, family-wise, everyone's doing great. From the Ticat family, uh, I know Coach O and myself uh, are in constant communication with coach and players, and uh, we fortunately have not had too many incidents of any health related through COVID. And again, I guess uh, this time of year, especially because there is a certain routine that you feel when you get into that second, third week of May, obviously we'd all like to be at McMaster right now. That's not the case, but uh, what is it that you're, you're, you're kind of missing about the opening of training camp and what's your, what's your favorite part about uh, training camp getting underway? Well, for me, it's, it's kind of like getting out from the four walls, like the draft is it, everything, all that off season stuff's kind of, put behind you, you know, you kind of have all everybody's hard work that we've collectively done, uh, the haze in the barn, sort of speak, and you're just ready to get outside and go to work. Like it, you, you want to see what you put together. So I think it's, uh, it's getting outside, moving around, seeing what you have. And, and just, I think part of this job, the, the benefit and the perk is really just the relationships and getting outside and, and being with the players and, and, and that sort of thing is, is really what I'm missing right now. Of course, last Saturday at 3.30, we were ready to roll. You know, that was opening meeting. Sean's got his piece, and then he turns it over to me. I mean, we're ready to roll. But, uh, hey, if, we, if, and, uh, if and when we, we, we go, we'll be ready to go. So I think I'm just missing it's, – it's a longer off season, and I'm just missing being out there and, and seeing everybody. Yes, you know, first thing I love about training camp is obviously competition, and that's what you love seeing out of athletes is the competition on the field, and all these guys have worked towards a common goal. Uh, so seeing them compete day in and day out and seeing the 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 makings of a team coming together through uh, Coach O's leadership and the staff's leadership, uh, I sort of get to see it from 500 feet above uh, from a uh, stadium in the press box or in the seats, and uh, – you get to see uh, the realities of uh, a team coming together. And for the personnel department in the off season, you know, you put blood, sweat, and tears into selling these guys that come up here, uh, talking to the coaches about uh, what we like to, about these players and how they fit into our team or in our culture. So to see that come together at camp, like Coach alluded to, to the relationships, just the funny behind the scenes stuff. Uh, you know, the rookie songs at camp at, uh, at mealtime or uh, just the spontaneity of stuff that comes up uh, before a meeting or uh, in the locker room. It just brings a smile to your face, and that's sort of what we're uh, missing right now. So looking forward to seeing that when we get rolling.
Yeah, it was uh, our friend Steve Milton a few weeks ago when camp was set to open. He had a nice little piece, and it really, you know, the sights, the sounds, the smells of McMaster just in those uh, couple weeks of May, uh, something I'm sure we all can't wait to. Maybe not so much the smells uh, on, on certain hot days, but uh, definitely can't wait to be back there at uh, McMaster for training camp whenever it kicks off. Uh, Berkey, let's get into some uh, more uh, specific questions, role-specific questions. Of course, uh, Senior Director of Personnel and Co-Manager of uh, Football Operations. Uh, Sean, you and your team have done a great job of finding talented players for the CFL. What do you look for specifically to choose between two players of otherwise equal talent to determine their suitability for the Canadian game? Uh, I think our blueprint is being uh, made quite easy by uh, uh, Coach O and the coaching staff, and that's we want competitive football players that love the game. And, uh, you know, that's the, the underlying thing when we're, we do an extensive uh, background check on guys. You know, we have developed questions that lead us into answers to see how much the game of football really matters to them. And uh, that, that's first and foremost. And then obviously we want it's, – it's hard to win football games. So the win with not the right people is even tougher. So we have to go through the segments of are they a fit into our culture? You know, not all – 60 players at any given time are all going to be the same type of people. We don't expect that we're not robots, but we want people that are going to fit certain needs into, in, into what we believe in here. And, uh, you know, coaches talked about it, getting the 60 best players together isn't the hardest part. It's putting the 60 best players for one certain team together is what the hard thing is. So uh, we keep that in mind. We keep the goals of the organization in mind and, uh, you know, we, we've said it to our scouts that it's not always about the most talented guy with this team. They have to fill certain roles and certain aspects. And uh, uh, we believe those underlying things uh, come into play when selecting the players. So if all ties are there, it's on those. First and foremost, love of the game and competitive players. So, Coach, this, this question almost kind of a great lead-in with that last answer is, uh, how important is culture? It seems critical when developing young players. This appears quite evident when watching the Toronto Raptors the last few years, and these Tiger Cats seem to be on the same path. So building culture in the locker room, how important is that uh, for you and for the success of the group? I think it's that uh, overused word in sports that really is what you need. You need a culture that uh, – it really, its values really drive, drive the organization. So it is, it's paramount for us, to be honest with you. And, you know, we take pride and we spend time on it. You know, we think that we have some experts in their fields and the X's and O's. We think we have experts in the video department, in therapy, uh, everybody. But uh, we all have to buy into the same thing. We all got to sing the same song. And uh, that's the most important thing. And Sean alluded to it you know, before. And that, that's the toughest thing because a lot, a lot of people's true character uh, doesn't shine through until adversity hits. And it's when then uh, that your culture really takes over. It's that invisible thing that, that, nope, that isn't seen. And so I think it's imperative to have great players in your locker room uh, along with great people. And so I think that the culture is something we work hard on. We take pride in it. Uh, sometimes we do bypass people that run faster and jump higher for somebody who wants to be here and really cares and is competitive, uh, we're not afraid to go with that, uh, even if it means we end up playing against them sometimes. So uh, it's a great question, but I think that uh, we spend a lot of time on it and it's uh, important not only for the organization, but inside the locker room. And that's why you got to have great players in there and people. You're on mute, buddy. Mute. Well, I'm sure you got something good to say. You got nice teeth. <laughs> and too. Uh, there we go. Here we go. There we go. Hey. hey, hey, there we go. It was just such a great answer. I was left speechless, Coach. Uh, uh, Berkey, obviously the draft now come and gone, one of the uh, parts of the uh, CFL season that uh, wasn't so much affected by the uh, by the COVID pandemic. But uh, when preparing for the draft, what is it that you look at first? Do you list positions in order of what needs to be filled first, or do you look to see what area you need to strengthen first, either offensively, defensively, special teams? Well, first, uh, preparation for the draft starts long before, and Drew Alamang and Spencer Bohm uh, do a great job of uh, 
having a lot of uh, the work done behind the scenes uh, well before everyone else is involved. So they, they do visits throughout last season uh, and, and do questionnaires and really get to know the players. So, But when you talk about draft strategies, I think it's always a delicate uh, balance between uh, the needs of a team and the uh, best player available, and it all depends on how it unfolds on draft night. Um, there's nine different teams selecting that have nine different criteria. So how we see the board is not how other teams see the board. And uh, usually there's surprises to each team. My bet is each team gasps at another team's pick uh, uh, throughout the draft uh, here and there. And uh, that's what makes all the teams so differently. So we have a lot of internal discussion. Uh, uh, Drew does a great job of uh, shaping out how he wants to do things and then coach O and myself become involved and uh you know by draft night it's sort of uh that like coach said the words the other day about when the training camps the haze in the barn with the players uh it's the same draft night the, the board sort of said and you just see how it falls and the only surprises are phone calls you get from other teams or phone calls we make from other teams to other teams about any changes in the order or, or whatnot. So it, at the end of the day, you want to have good quality people in the building, like we talked about in the previous question. Uh, and uh, you want to affect all three sides of the ball. So when you looked at what we did on draft day la or uh, this past couple weeks, uh, you know, I think we impacted special teams. I think we impacted defensively and I think we impacted offensively. So collectively it can uh, help our whole team. Uh, Coach or, uh, Berkey, let's stay with you on this one because it's another question about drafting. Uh, how much does the ability to play special teams factor in when it comes to drafting players uh, and where you draft them? Oh, it's absolutely critical when you talk about the draft. It's one of the first questions uh, that uh, coaches ask uh, personnel department, and it's one of the first questions uh, that Drew and Spencer uh, ask the draftees if they're willing to play on special teams and contribute on special teams and how would they feel if that was their only impactful uh, part of uh, the team for the year. So uh, special teams is a huge component to our game. So many players in our league have got their start on special teams and worked their, their way up. So there's got to be a mentality uh, to do that. Uh, there's got to be the work ethic to do it. And uh, there's got to be the smarts to do it. So those are all components that go into it. But uh, without question, special teams is a huge component of our draft strategy. Uh, we'd just like to take a welcome once again to uh, all of our exclusive season ticket holder members who are taking part in this conversation, of course, with uh, Sean Burke and Orlando Steiner. And let's go to, back to a question for both of you guys. Uh, we'll start with you, Coach. Favorite city to play in on the road? Uh, let's say Saskatchewan's pretty good atmosphere. It's the stadium, not necessarily. Okay. The All right. <laughs> what to be sure? I, that, it's not the nightlife of Saskatchewan. That, that, that's a loud stadium. They and I like the sunken. Uh, Winnipeg's got a nice venue. I mean, all the venues are nice, but I, I think Sask has a pretty special vibe there. Berkey. Uh, just because of recent history, I I think Ottawa's always been. Uh, great games going back and forth with, with us and they've done a great job with their stadium and precinct around it. Um, uh, and their fan base has been great uh, playing against. So I would go with Ottawa for now. No, it was a great one too. Both, uh, both great road trips for any uh, uh, tie cats fans looking to make uh, a little bit of a drive in the next couple of years here. Let's go back to some individual questions. Coach O how much of coaching is X's and O's and how much of it is managing personalities and egos of players? Yeah, I think it's, it's different when you're talking head coach versus coordinators versus position coaches. So I think it's a longer winded answer there. Uh, but as an overview and a blanket statement, I would say that X, you do have to have X's and O's. And if, if you can picture a pie chart, that's funny that we actually have this in our organization. And half of it would be about people. The other is about attitude and your mindset. It's process. And then the, the last part of the pie is X's and O's. Because you do have to have knowledge of the game. But at the end of the day, you are managing people. And we try to keep that at the root of the majority of things we do. We set clear expectations and goals and expect them to be adhered to. Uh, and, and we roll from there. So uh, how much? I would say that the X's and O's, you know, I don't know. 30, 25% somewhere in there. 
but uh, the majority of it is about people because every day they wake up, there's, there's a new challenge. There's things that never hit the newspaper. Only thing that hits the newspaper is we, we dropped a touchdown or we scored a touchdown. We got a pick or we missed a pick. We made the field goal or missed. Not that so-and-so had a baby or they got in a car accident or Sean could give you a laundry list. We could do a whole show on that, but I'll spare everybody that. But uh, I would say there's more managing people than X's and O's, in my opinion, in my role. Kirk, yeah, you want to jump in on that? Yep. I'll jump in on that. I, uh, I, I remember one of the first things I said to Coach O uh, when he took over the head roll is you're going to be spending a lot more uh, time on the uh, people stuff than, uh, than X's and O's. And uh, where I got that from, there was a great article that Scott Pioli did about the transition uh, from being a director of player personnel to a GM in the NFL. And Scott was under the Patriots and then went to the Chiefs and everything. And he said – the biggest change was he started spending 70% of his time on uh, issues that he didn't expect at the, at the start of the week or the start of the day. And, you know, that's part of uh, my role and Coach O's role is to handle that stuff. And I think it helps building the culture that we want here is knowing when we tell players our doors are always open and come to us with anything, it is truly meant. And uh, I, I can say that I believe our team feels that, there's nothing they can't bring forward to us that's going on with their lives that they won't be listened to. Uh, nothing's dismissed. And uh, you got to treat people as uh, people first and players second. So uh, it's definitely uh, something that takes up a bunch of our time, but it also makes us uh, a better organization for having the ability to spend that time on it. If I had a nickel for every time I heard Coach Orlando Steinauer say, people first. Uh, I'd be a, a very rich man, but it is a great, obviously it's something you stick with uh, and it works. It definitely works. Uh, coach, this question is for you. What does your linebacking situation look like in terms of starters this season? Specifically, how great is it to have Larry Dean back? And what does the addition of Patrick Levels mean for possibly moving Rico Murray to maybe halfback or to a different position? Uh, good question. Somebody managed to squeeze four into one. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, they do. Hey, hey, the well, one thing I will say about what, Tiger Cats fans is they know this game inside and out. Well, so, I mean, whoever, they're very knowledgeable. Did that people. one, great job. Uh, everybody else, grab a seat and some popcorn. <laughs> so, uh, I would say that we're excited about where we're at linebacker-wise. Uh, why? I think, uh, again, the personnel department, I think Spencer and his whole staff have done a great job with uh, bringing in great competition. Sean alluded to it earlier. I think there's outstanding competition at the linebacker spot. I think the one thing when you talk about like Simone Lawrence and you bring in a Larry Dean, it's easy on paper just to pencil these guys in there. But one thing these both of them love and they're not shy from is competition. So I know that with the competition that we've brought in, it's only going to elevate them and they're going to rise up and it's going to make them better, which in turn will make us better. And if somebody else is better, then that's, that's an amazing thing for the Hamilton Tiger cats. But uh, Larry Dean, besides which it just the accolades and those type of things uh, he is, you're going to hear it again. Plug your ears, Louie. He's an outstanding person. He's unbelievable, high character and he's aggressive loves to play. Uh, again, he wanted to be back. And so that's exciting for us. Uh, as far as Patrick Levels, <laughs> you turn his tape on and you one thing that you're going to see, and sorry for the broken record, is you're going to see a guy that is ultra competitive. And, again, that's what excites us about that linebacking core across the top. Of course, our Sam position is more of a nickel position. Uh, it's more of a defensive back, but he should be able to blitz and tackle. And Patrick definitely isn't afraid of that. Again, we have uh, Rico Murray back there. And we got some good young talent coming in. So I'll, I'll say this uh, to sum it up, that our linebacking core is going to be highly competitive at camp. Um, I'm praying and hoping that if we get to go to training camp this year, that we'll get a few padded days because I think that'll be of the utmost importance. Uh, we've got some uh, exciting players I think that Ticat fans will be juiced up about. Berkey, I have to assume that, that each player knows nothing is guaranteed when it comes to a, a spot on the field. But is that an extra element of the conversation in free agency talks that, hey, you know, we, we want to sign you, you want to be here. But also, you know, you're gonna, you might have to go up against a, a five-year vet for your spot to really determine your spot on the field. 
Well, I don't think any player wants anything guaranteed, in my opinion. They want to earn everything they get. Uh, that's why they're professional athletes, and that's why they've made it as far as they have, because they're driven. Uh, so I, half the time, you don't even need to have the conversation. But if they ask those questions, all you can be is uh, truthful and candid with your answers. Uh, the worst thing you want uh, is to tell someone to come here in free agency but not tell them the truth because then they're walking into the situation that they didn't sign up for. So, uh, you know, Coach O gets on the phone with uh, players at times, positional coaches, everyone, and the, the players have quite the understanding of what our team's about before they get in here so there's no surprises. But, you know, when we're bringing up recruits, uh, Coach O's talked about it is uh, I think we've had an outstanding off season, specifically a linebacker and defensive back spots of bringing in some Americans. Uh, every year it sort of differs. Position groups, sometimes you're just heavy on a neg list that wide receiver one year, which we were last year. And we had f four or five receivers first year stick with us most of the year. And then this year, I feel we've hit on a lot of DBs and uh, linebackers to bring out a competition. What we tell those guys is you come in and compete and where the chips, chips fall, they fall. And uh, I think everyone uh, knows what they sign up for when they, uh, get into professional football and every player believes that they should be a starting player, which is what, what you want, you want from guys. You don't want to shy away from that attitude. And then what makes them come in and become a member of the, uh, the organization and the team is what coach and myself were talking about earlier is the culture in the room and everyone becomes part of the team and everyone fits within the role because you're playing for the guy beside you more than the, uh, yourself. So uh, it all works out at the end. Uh, we are set to be joined by our special guests in just a, a couple of minutes here. So we have a, a few more minutes to get some uh, questions in here for uh, uh, both these guys, of course, Sean Burke and uh, Coach O. Thanks again to our season ticket holders for uh, being a part of this conversation. Uh, uh, Berkey, any chance Luke Tasker resigns with the team? Yeah, we've been in constant communication with Luke uh, throughout this process. And I think uh, – uh, Luke's going through a different stage in his life. He just had twin boys, uh, so he's got three now. Uh, so that that's great. And uh, he's sort of assessing where things are in terms of his career. And we told him uh, the biggest thing, uh, <laughs> not to say it over and over again, is the, the communication element and the, the upfrontness. Uh, and we've said, let's see where things go. Uh, and we've kept things very open-ended. And he's promised us to – to keep us aware of anything's upcoming with any other teams in the league. So there's no slamming of the doors by any means, but I think both uh, the organization and himself will continue to talk with each other and uh, see what happens at the end. Uh, Coach O, this question is for you. What was the biggest impact June Jones had on you uh, during your year of uh, coaching together with this organization? Oh, great question. Well, I, I learned, I learned a, a whole – a whole ton from from June. Uh, I would say just be uh, as my first opportunity to actually spend time on the offensive side of the ball. So just learning that from that perspective was invaluable for my growth. Um, that was outstanding. But as far as I would just say his his demeanor, uh, his approach to adversity, and those type of things that he brought were really unique and it, it wasn't uh, something that I was looking to get it's just something that you absorb from being around him daily uh, just his approach to ball his knowledge uh, who he is as a person what's important to him off the football field how committed he is to football during the season um, his relationships his stories how he got where he was there's just so many endless things but I would just say if you wanted me to say one thing because this call was going to end I would say uh, just his demeanor and approach and preparation to the game. Uh, another one here for uh, you coach uh, again this is a question for one of our uh, very smart season ticket holders. Uh, <laughs> I'm intrigued by the different receiver types including running back that will be at camp. Do you ever anticipate running the ball? Partially kidding but seriously do you see a significant change in the playbook heading into the 2020 season? Well, I think with Tommy Condell as our coordinator, we are multiple in all three facets of the football game, uh, meaning special teams, defense, and offense. Uh, we believe in being uh, multiple and doing different things. I think 
we are most committed to winning and whatever that takes that specific week uh, that's what we're going to do. If that means we need to run it 20 times, then that's what we'll do. If we have to throw it 55 times, then that's what we'll do. Uh, we're less committed to a cookie cutter model of this is who we're going to be and this is how we're going to do it. We are a week to week football team. Uh, as far as the playbook, I can rest assured uh, who wrote or ever asked that question. We have every run in. Uh, we have multiple runs out of multiple formations. Uh, again, I believe Tommy is an expert in this field with the addition of you know, Mike, and we got Mike Gibson and Jim, and of course, DJ and Jared Baines. I think we're, we're going to be heavily equipped. We'll have plenty of ammo. So, yes, we'll run the ball. And uh, most important, we're committed to winning than running the ball. I, th I think the one thing people forget about when they, uh, you know, constructively criticize what they may assume or what they may perceive to be a, a lack of running game. Uh, just Sean Thomas Erlington in those, those first four weeks of the season, it's hard to understate just how good he was before he went down and the adjustments that you and Tommy and the rest of your coaching staff had to make uh, after losing such a, you know, a high profile player uh, who, who has the skills like you do. And Berkey, I guess that kind of goes into the next point of uh, bringing a guy like Don Jackson, someone who, who wanted to be here, someone who's got explosive speed, you know, from behind the line of scrimmage. I guess this kind of goes to that last person's question, someone who, who can be a threat in the receiving game as well. Yeah, and just to piggyback on the run game, I think often people look at one running back's run totals from a stat line, and uh, they don't, you know, when you look at the run game, there's QB design runs. There was the runs we did with uh, Braylon and Brandon, and then, and then there's uh, screen passes too. So those are all part of the run game, just to add on to that. But in terms of Don, he's a guy that the coaching staff uh, identified with us uh, before free agency began that we, we felt uh, – had some good tape and had gone through some injury issues in Calgary and was worth exploring and talking to. So we brought him up uh, in the new, newly developed timeline before free agency and got him in the building and got to know him and look at his medical records and spent time with, with all of us. So uh, he was a guy we identified and uh, he, he said he was all on board as soon as he left the building. He, uh, he was ready to roll and he wanted his tie cat gear. So it was great to see the enthusiasm uh, of wanting to be a part of this organization and really uh, make a difference for us. And then, you know, we, we've signed two other American backs uh, through this process. One uh, one that's uh, had significant NFL experience with Brandon Oliver that we've tracked for a while. And then another Jordan Ellis uh, who played at Virginia that was a thousand yard runner at Virginia. And then we have uh, the Canadian running back. So that's going to be uh, a dog fight when training camp comes. And what it's going to give is uh, – what uh, personnel people try to do is as much flexibility for the coaching staff to do uh, do anything and everything with that roster possible. So uh, we feel we have good guys coming in, and we're excited to see them. All right. Thanks to our uh, season ticket holders for joining this conversation. It's not done yet. In fact, I promised you uh, two very special guests off the top, and uh, I'm very pleased to bring in those two guests now. Again, not sure where they'll show up on your screen, but uh, very pleased to be welcoming uh, Jeremiah Masoli, of course, quarterback of the Hamilton Tiger Cats and uh, newly signed receiver, Devere Posey. Uh, there they are. Uh, gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Uh, Soli, looking good. What's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, what's good. going on, brother? Good, good. Devere, good to see you as well. Uh, uh, Jeremiah, we'll start with you. Obviously, uh, you'd love to be at uh, McMaster, as we all would right now. Uh, getting back into, into playing shape. But we'll uh, start with the, the obvious question. Uh, how's the knee doing? How are you feeling? Uh, the knee's doing good. Um, <clears throat> still working on it every day, getting closer to 100%. But besides that, everything's holding up pretty well. Uh, Devere, obviously, uh, this is one of kind of your first events as a member of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. So uh, welcome and uh, give all our uh, season ticket holders who are watching a nice uh, big hello. Hey, hello. First, I want to say what's up to my boy Masoli first. What's good, bro? Hope you <laughs> what's up, brother? What's up, man? Hope you're feeling good. How you doing, Sean and everybody? And, uh, you know, hello, Ticat, you know, fan base. I'm so excited. Uh, I mean, Jeremiah, I tell you, you know, I, I get super hyped up for Hamilton games every year, just playing in Tim Hortons, you know, and just the energy. I can't imagine practicing there every day, just walking into that facility, man. I'm can't wait till COVID is over so we can get back to it. 
Well said. Uh, Coach, I want to go to you here because uh, one of our questions was asking about having two of the top five quarterbacks in the CFL, and I don't think that's uh, much of an understate, it, understatement, if one at all. Um, I, I'm sure this competition would have looked a little different if it had been starting now, but now we know that the season isn't starting until September. So are you anticipating an even more competitive battle for that QB1 spot than maybe you thought you would have at the beginning of the year? No, that, anybody who knows Jeremiah and, and knows Dane knows that they they don't shy away from anything. They, they welcome all comers. Just look at the path that they took to get here. There wasn't anything given to either one of them. Uh, they bust their tail. They have the respect of the football team. And so just it's no different to me than bringing in two Mike linebackers, two defensive ends, um, and those type of things. Like we're, we're trying to be the best football team we can be. Um, they have trust in us that, you know, we're going to do what's best for the football team. But, I mean, the, there he is right there, you know, like he's going to bust his tail. This, I mean, as much as COVID hurts everybody else, it actually helps with his, with his rehab. So, um, again, we're excited with the competition everywhere. I know you look at Posey there. Like he, look at his journey and stuff. Like he, he's had to compete the whole time. So uh, we like where we're at. And I'm just looking forward to getting on the field if and when that happens. And I guess, Berkey, it goes back to the kind of people you want on your team uh, to have to be able to bring these guys in and to say, hey, you know, compete for the number one spot. And neither one of them are, is going to come back to you with a bit of an ego of saying, I didn't sign up for this. This isn't it. Like, trade me. I mean, it, it goes back to the people you have on your team and, and people first, player second. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I would say, uh, like Coach is talking about, both their journeys uh, – have showed what type of team players they are. And uh, Jeremiah and myself have been together since 2013 and uh, have always had an open door policy. And uh, uh, we've had some great conversations and some tough conversations during that time. And uh, the amount of respect uh, I have him for, for him as a player and as a man is incredible. So uh, when we started talking about the new contract uh, and him, his first thing was just wanting to stay Hamilton Tiger Cat, which is the most important thing you want to hear of, out of anyone's uh, mouth when uh, you're trying to make them continue to be part of your team or come to your team. And that was his first and only thing was continuing his journey as a Tiger Cat and uh, uh, helping us in our ultimate goal, which is trying to win a great cup here. So that's always been what's most important for Jeremiah. He, uh, he has a tremendous amount of confidence in himself, and we talked about that previously before he was on the call, is every guy at this level has that type of confidence. That that's why they made it so far. You know, and then just piggyback, the beer's in the exact same situation. You know, when we started talking, uh, it was about him becoming a tie cat, not about what his role was or how many balls he was going to get. He just wanted to be part of this club and help us win a championship. So when you have two great guys on the call like they are that, are just in it about making the team better and whatever has to be done, it, it, it makes all the chips fall in place. Sully, uh, we were talking about the, the culture of the locker room and the culture of this Tiger Cats group a little bit earlier in the call. Now having been, you know, one of the longest serving members of this team, you've kind of seen this team go through good times and bad times and now really good times <laughs> as uh, we're hoping in this 2020 season. But uh, the culture in the locker room, who establishes that and – and does it take a little bit more for certain guys or for, for some guys to buy into to what you guys are selling? Um, you know, fortunately, you know, we got Berkey uh, and, the, and his staff bringing in some great people. Um, but, you know, for as long as I've been there, it's, it's always started with the players. It started with guys like Mike Filer, Simone Lawrence, you know, Speedy B, <clears throat> Larry Dean. These guys are, you know, the, the type of people you want in your corner on your side. And uh, I know a lot of the young guys, as far as I've seen, have learned a lot from them, just learning by example. And then uh, I know a lot of us older people try to teach the younger guys, uh, but everybody is, is growing at their own pace, you know. So some people might take a little longer to uh, mature into what we're doing. But uh, for the most part, man, I, I think even last year was a testament that most people just bought in very quickly. And uh, it was one of those things that you've seen on the field, too. So. I'm I'm super excited for this year. Like this is probably the most excited I've been my whole career just to just to get to camp and uh, be around the guys. Obviously, because my situation is a little different. I, I've kind of been away from the field, so I'm I'm just licking my chops, hoping we can get back soon. 
Uh, Devere, uh, free agency, you'd gone through the process before. You played with some very good quarterbacks. You've played on some very good teams. Uh, your great cup ring uh, attests to that. Uh, what was it about Hamilton that, that drew you to the organization, and what are you most excited about when it comes to joining this team? Uh, like, like I said, to start a call, just, just the atmosphere in Tim Hortons Field, uh, just from my first team I ever played with in Canada, you know, it was the other team up the QUE. You just mentioned, and I remember just, you know, riding down and just being so excited. Uh, the Hamilton Tigercats were my first introduction to the CFL. My brother played here um, back in, I think it was, was it, Berkey? Was it 2013? Uh, 2014. 2014. And so it, it was my introduction to the CFL, and it, it was sort of how I uh, kind of, it was the first game I came to. I saw you guys play against the Toronto Argonauts before when I was still in the NFL, and just being around the organization and the team just from afar, I know how the fans treat me when I come as a visitor. And now just to be on that other side, I love it. But just like anything with competition, like I was born for it. Um, I grew up in a house with a brother that played football. So I just, I love it. And I just love what that city brings. So to me, it was a no brainer. When Sean actually gave me a call, I was, was kind of off guard because I was a free agent for a week already. And just so I was kind of honored and just, knowing the success that Hamilton had last year with one of the greatest records in CFL history and, and then asking me to come be a part of that, like you said, it, it was a no brainer. You know, we, we figured everything out very quickly and, and I was happy. I was happy to announce it, happy to tell my family I'll be closer to home and tell my brother he'll be playing for his old team. And, and when it comes down to like quarterbacks, I mean, I have the most ultimate respect for Jeremiah. I've known him since I was like, what, 19? from a, as far as like a scouting point perspective because we played against each other in the Rose Bowl and they gave us hell and I don't know how we came out of that game but I, I've been a big fan of his you know even from those days to Ole Miss and then just seeing his success in the CFL so to be able to strap it up with him man I, I played against him on many big stages and I mean he knows what I bring and I know what he does well and it would be amazing to mesh with like him and Speedy and Don Jackson and Erlington and everybody else. Yeah, I mean, Masoli, when you look at the, the, the talent that you have on offense, obviously uh, you've played with some very talented receivers and uh, you've played on some good teams here, but just the options that you have, dropping back, you're looking out of the field, you can either throw the ball to the MOP, uh, you can throw the ball to Posey. I mean, they're, they're, it's got to be exciting for you just to, just to see what you can do with all these offensive weapons at your disposal. Yeah, like I said, man, I'm licking my chops, but uh... – I know when we signed Devere, I was I was pretty happy because I'm tired of losing this guy, man. From from college to the pros, man, I'm I'm tired of losing this guy. So I'm glad we got him on on the right side, and and now we'll just be be racking up all these W's together. Yeah, it's well said, uh, Coach. Oh, looking at uh, the talent that you have on offense, uh, you know, 15 and three record last year. Uh, you know, you go out, you add Larry Dean, you add Patrick Levels, you add Devere Posey, you add all these guys. Do you feel like there's maybe a bit of a target on your back heading into this season? No, we don't We don't look at it like that. We're just looking to get better day one training camp, win that day, and then we're going to win day two. And if there's a preseason game, we just take it in stride like that. So um, each year is different. Do we like the pieces that we add? Absolutely. Like, that's, that's why they're here. Like, we want people that want to be here. We want people that want to want to do their thing and then – you know, at the end of the day, you know, the players are going to make their plays. You got to put them, give them opportunity and, and they'll make it happen. So, um, you know, I just, uh, I'm just excited, you know, just as excited as these guys, man. I, I, I'm chopping out there just to see, to see them get out there and play. And, you know, the weapons we have out there, it's how quickly we can become a team. Right now we're a group of people. We got to become a team. And that's what, that's, that's what we're, I'm looking forward to is that's my part. So I, I know these guys are handling their business, but we can't control that just like they can't control me. So, but I'm going to make sure that our vision is clear, our expectations and goals are clear so that they know exactly what they got to hit. And then we go from there. So you can see the, 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 the flux in my voice. Like I get excited. I feel like I'm in front of the team right now. Like this is, this is what we live for. This is what we're getting excited for. And uh, if, like I said, if and when, we'll, we'll be ready to go. So targets on our back. We welcome that. If that's what the media, if that's what that you guys want to write, we don't run from that now. Don't get it twisted. So we don't run from it, but we, that doesn't motivate us either. We're, we're motivated internally. We're self-started. Nobody's going to hold a higher standard than what we have for ourselves. But 
Uh, I'm gonna calm back down. Go ahead. Let's go. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, hey, okay, oh, man. Right I, up, baby. I, okay, uh, Masoli, to go. Let's go to you. I mean, hearing Coach get all fired up like that, can you take us back to to one of uh, maybe one of his speeches that you can remember uh, that that really kind of lit a fire under you that uh, really motivated the team? Well, back to your earlier question too about guys buying in the culture, and I know Coach O doesn't really like hearing other people talk about him. You know, he's just that kind of guy, but. You know, you heard it right there in, in this two-minute spiel real quick, it, how pumped up he can he can get a, a room. And, you know, the guys really buy into that because they can tell it's genuine, authentic. And uh, he's done it before. You know, he's played at the high level and uh, been very successful. So, you know, it's very easy to buy into to a guy like that. And um, can I remember a specific speech? <laughs> um, I don't want to give any secrets away, but um, I know, you know, at the Grey Cup, it was uh, – there, well, actually, there was a time where where coach just didn't even say a speech. How about that? That was a great one. I remember that. Coach just said, "Are you guys ready? All right, let's go. I don't need to say anything." And you know, it was just it was just business as usual, and everybody understood, and everybody was on the same page. I thought that was awesome. Uh, Devere, uh, you have uh, experience working with. Uh, did you did you work with uh, Tommy when you were with the Argos there? Yes. There was yeah. some crossover there. So to be reunited with Tommy Condell, first of all. Uh, what do you kind of like about him as a coordinator? And how important was that for you when it came to making up your mind, that familiarity of uh, being able to work with uh, Tommy Condell once again? I mean, first off, I, I would love to just, like, he's a great man. The father, the husband he is, is next, second to none. Um, first off, he taught me how to be a better a husband and a better man uh, initially. And I respect him for that. And because of that, it makes football and work easy because I respect him on that level. And uh, his attention to detail, I mean, I know Coach O and Jeremiah, and I was like, this guy's putting like footprints on tip sheets of like where you're supposed to step on a certain break or if it's this coverage, wiggle the guy this way. Like he's, he, you know, he has everything from top to bottom. Like he can tell you like how the play should look from every single position. Um, I love that. I love that organization coming into a game. I love being overprepared. I love having a tip sheet for our tip for every single play and all our 18. And, and, um, and Tommy is uh, responsible for, for influencing me on being like that perfectionist and influencing me at a professional level to, to reach those goals every single day. Um, I remember one quote he always would say, like I know y'all could probably attest to this, but he would always say, you gotta take the trash out with a smile on your face. And I just, I never forgot that because it's so true and you can apply that. It's so applicable in every aspect of life. And I always take that away. So I'm excited to be next to him again and working with him and instilling those golden nuggets every day again. Uh, Berkey, I guess that goes back to, you know, kind of the free agency offseason uh, buzz, the rumors that go around. Uh, you know, it was reported that uh, that both Tommy Condell and Mark Washington were, were going to, interview for jobs elsewhere, head coaching jobs elsewhere in the league. But uh, to be able to retain two guys like that, again, you know, two quality individuals, two quality people going into this season, I mean, just almost as big as uh, a signing like DeVere or, or bringing back a guy like Larry Dean or Dylan Wynn. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, I'll let Coach speak more of that. But the ability uh, just from, from my end to have – quality uh, coordinators and a head coach like Coach O when talking to guys in free agency, it gives your organization instant credibility. So, uh, you know, everyone has uh, their decisions uh, for pursuing or not pursuing things. And uh, I'm just quite happy that uh, we we're able to retain all three coordinators and have them under contract for multiple years here. And uh, to have that consistency amongst the staff of these, these great people working together just makes our job so much easier uh, to put a team together uh, with the help of them. Uh, you know, first and foremost, like we talked about earlier in a call, when we talk about what we want out of, uh, out of players is uh, great people first. And I know that's what Coach O looks for in his coaching staff. And it's what we look for uh, together uh, in the operations staff and what uh, Drew and myself look for in the personnel staff is uh, you want to be associated with great people that, uh, put uh, others before themselves. And I think we have that throughout our organization. 
Yeah, Coach O, just to, to piggyback on that, you know, bringing back the coordinators that you have, obviously DeVere's relationship with, uh, with Tommy is going to help a lot. Uh, and then you got, of course, you know, Masoli knows everybody here. Uh, how important was it for you to bring, bring these guys back and, and to have that coaching staff uh, in, intact for, for this year and, and multiple years, as Berkey says? I think continuity is always important. Uh, I understood this. When you assemble a staff like, like I think that we have, they're going to be in demand every year. And that's just the way I look at it. Like Tommy's going to garner that type of respect. Mark's going to garner that, you know, Jeff's at the top of his craft. And I think the beautiful thing is, is we want to, you know, we always want to train people well enough so they can always leave, but we want to treat them well enough to where it's hard decision for them. And that's just really how, how we just kind of build our model. And so for them, it, the most important thing is, you know, because they, they enjoy where they're at, that they don't have to take the first thing that jumps out at them, right? They're able to be selective when they're ready to move on. They'll be head coaches one day, right? And I think great leaders produce other leaders, right? And I think that's what I'm most proud of. So their time will come, but I like that they're able to be selective and they don't have to jump at the first opportunity that comes with them. So bringing them back is, is unbelievable because anybody who sat in our building knows that there's one message. The message is consistent throughout. And that that's all starts at the top and it, it trickles down in what we call subcultures uh, through the coordinator. So it's exciting to bring them back. It's exciting to bring the core pieces of, uh, of the football team back. You're always going to lose some great people. You can't keep everybody. Everybody's underpaid. Everybody deserves raises. And so ultimately they got to want to be here. And I, and I understand that that's, that's the nature of the business. So, uh, we'll be excited and ready to go, but it's, it was extremely uh, exciting for me to be able to bring everybody back. Uh, Jeremiah, one of the names that's uh, come up here in our chat uh, so far this afternoon was, uh, was June Jones, and uh, obviously someone who had a, a big impact on your career, but uh, maybe just kind of measure, uh, if you can, uh, what he had, what kind of impact he had on, on your career and, and what you're kind of most grateful for for his time here in Hamilton. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously the obvious one is just kind of kind of trusted me with with the keys to the offense and letting me get on the field and uh, kind of do what I do, and um, you know from there just building the trust with them uh, within making decisions with within plays. Um, but I know I know that you know coach Coach June knows this too. It goes way beyond the field, just just the X's and O's. Like he's he's been such a legend, and and not only like the Polynesian community, uh, but like just the West coast in general. And, um, you know, he, he's done so much for, and this is what I think about when I think of him, you know, he's done so much for my family and, and the islands, the Samoan people back in the islands. I don't think a lot of people know too much, but you know, he's gathered so much, you know, medical equipment, donated so much money and, and gathered so many resources for that. You know, I just look at him as such a great human being for doing that, that kind of work. And then obviously, you know, he, he kind of gave me the start to, to my career as far as, uh, uh, you know, being on, on the Tiger Cats. And, uh, you know, we, we were just talking yesterday. So, you know, I, I hold him in high regard and uh, I love that guy. All right. Uh, we got uh, time for one more question. Let's go around the horn here. Uh, what do you eat on game day and do you have any superstitions uh, when it comes to game day? Let's go around the horn and let's start with Devere Posey. Uh, what do you eat on game day and any superstitions you might have? Uh the morning of or night before is, is that uh, okay well let's let's say game day let's morning okay, up. Game day. all right i'm gonna have like a, a bunch of fruit and um just like one like grain and then i'm good to go after that and then just a bunch of water and then like my only superstition is i have to i have to kiss the turf before i play on it like i just like I have to tell the turf to love me. Like I don't want to cut on field, I don't like out routes. Like it has to be in tune with me. So I talk to the ground before we kick off. That's it. All right, Soli, uh, your your game game day meal, breakfast, and uh, any superstitions. First off, that's a good one right there, man. Kissing the ground. I I got to start kissing the ball and talking to it, man. Just <laughs> just just score a touchdown for me, you know, something like that. But I, uh, I'm with Devere too. I, I, I love fruit. I make sure I got a lot of watermelon the night before and the day of in the morning. Might have some soup the day of, just depending on what time the, the game is at. Um, but it's superstition. Like, if I lose in a pair of socks, those socks are gone. No more. They will not make it to the next game. 
you know, and uh, and and I and I have a tight tight leash on tights too, you know. And shout out to Drew, our equipment manager, man. I know he probably hates it, but uh, when I if we if I'm losing in tights or something like that, and it's two or three games, we're we're done with it. So that's my superstition. Berkey, uh, you got a favorite game day meal or any superstitions? Uh, I got it easy on game day, man. I'm not like these guys. I'm a big guy to begin with, so it's mostly seafood, e-food on, uh, <laughs> on game day. So I mean, to control some nervousness. But uh, uh, it's just getting to watch these guys do their thing, and I get to see the whole week come together in terms of the game plan and everything. Uh, so it, it's more or less uh, I get to sit back. I, I would say my one routine on game day is looking at the roster sheet probably about 65 different times. <laughs> Make sure there's not an incorrect name or number. Uh, that falls on my plate, and I always have dreams about it going wrong. So I probably overanalyze it. But other than that, I just get to sit back and enjoy uh, the process and see how the week unfolds. Yes, but my favorite meal is whatever the uh, the meal they have up in the uh, the press box is for that day. Uh, yeah. Coach, you gotta o- aim higher than that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> one day, one day, Coach O finishes off here. Uh, what, what's your favorite thing to eat on game day? And any superstitions you have? See, this is where it worked out bad. You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have <laughs> I don't got enough. I had more as a player than I did as a co- as a coach. I'm trying. Only I don't have any superstitions, and I eat whatever's whatever. <laughs> like whatever i don't know a and w matzo burger i guess that's on the way to the stadium uh i'm i, I like gummy candy i might have some sour patch kids uh, some sweetest berries and other than that uh, i'm there, there's no superstitions really i like watching the players warm up i i know the one thing i've noticed as a head coach is i'm out there i'm not out there shaking hands as much i'm kind of in the locker room until we got to come out and then i'll come out and talk to the refs but not a lot of superstitions. I'm enjoying everybody else's, though. I probably Nobody, the turf, though. Hey, Sully, Sully, we're going over the sock and tight budget now. I, gotta, <laughs> I don't know where, where Drew's coming from, man. Line by line. Nobody asked me, but I like doing three laps of the stadium. Like, three laps, you know, on the field, up and then down. So, that's my free game uh, superstition. I'll Gentlemen, you thank you guys so much for doing this. It's been a lot of fun. Oh, Great way to spend an afternoon. Uh, it's great to see you guys. Stay well, stay healthy, and we can't wait to see you. Uh, for all of those uh, who want to say uh, a few things to our guys here before you go, uh, go ahead, coach. go nuts. We're going to sign off. We're going to let them go. Thanks so much for doing this, guys. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, coach. coach. Have a great, nice have a great season. season. Yeah, thanks for being out there. Appreciate it. Yeah. Have a great season. All right. Love all you the best guys. Have a great season. Guys. guys are awesome. Thanks. Thank all you, right. guys. Oski wee wee. Yeah. <laughs>